Hi, in this lecture we are going to talk about the concrete implementation of the Q abstract data type. Unlike stack, it has a FIFO structure, so first in, first out. So we have the FIFO structure, which means that the first item we insert is going to be the first item we take out. Okay, so let's implement the class Q. Okay, and of course we will have several methods, such as the NQ and the DQ method. So first of all we have the constructor with the self, and we just have to create a one-dimensional array. So self.q is equals to a one-dimensional array at the beginning. Of course it is empty. We can define the isEmpty method which is going to check whether that given Q is empty or not. So it's going to check whether this Q is equals to an empty Q or not. Okay. As you may guess, it's going to return true if it is equals to an empty array, which means that the given Q is empty. Otherwise it returns false, which means that there are items inserted into the Q abstract data type. And again, as you can see, we are able to use a one-dimensional array as the underlying data structure for the Q abstract data type. It's very similar to what we have seen for stack. Stack is an abstract data type, Q is an abstract data type, but we have an underlying data structure, the one-dimensional array. Okay, we have the NQ, it's going to get a data and we just have to insert it into the Q. So let's append it this given data to the one-dimensional array. What about dequeuing? We just have to get the data. It's going to be the self.q0 instead of minus one, what we have seen for the stack. This is how we get the last item. But here, Q has a FIFO structure, so the first item we insert is going the first item we take out. So we have to define the index of the first item, which is zero. Then we have to get rid of the reference, self.q with zero index, and then we have to return the data itself. Okay. Again, we have a peak method, which is not going to remove the item, but it's going to return the value. So we are just going to return the self.q with the zero index. And of course we have the size of the queue, which is going to be the return length of the self.q one dimensional array. Okay, something like this. So this is the Q abstract data type. We keep inserting items 10, then 4, then 20. Okay. And the DQ operation is going to take the first item we have inserted, which is the 10. Okay. Then we take out the 4 when we call the Q again. So this is how Q abstract data type works. Let's try to test it. I'm going to create a Q as a new queue and I would like to enqueue several items. 10 for example, I'm going to copy and paste for example 20, then 30. Then I would like to print out the size which is going to be the queue dot size of the queue. Okay, something like this. Then I would like to print out the, the queue and we just have to append the queue dot the queue, okay. I'm going to call this method once more and then I would like to print out the size again. So let's copy and paste it. Okay, what are we expecting? We keep enqueuing 10, 20 and 30, so the size is going to be three. There are three items in the queue abstract data type. Then we are going to dequeue the first item we have inserted, so we get 10. Then we dequeue the second item we have inserted, which is 20. And then we get the size. The size is going to be 1 because we have already get rid of two items. So let's see whether it's working fine or not. I would like to run the Python q.py. Okay, the size is 3 at the beginning because we have inserted 3 items. 
Then we get the first item we have inserted, the second item we have inserted, and because we have managed to take out two items out of three, the size is going to be one. There is a single item in the abstract data type after the DQ operations. So this is how Q abstract data type works. It has a FIFO structure, so the first item we insert is going to be the first item we take out. Why is it good? Because lots of lots of advanced algorithms relies heavily on the Q abstract data type. For example, the breadth first search. If we want to traverse a huge graph, we can make it with the help of breadth first search and the breadth first search relies heavily on the Q abstract data type. Or for example, we can make a priority queue. It is a modified version of the queue and it's going to be very important when we are dealing with shortest path algorithms, for example, with dash class algorithm. So this is why this queue and stack abstract data types are quite important as far as algorithms and data structures are concerned. Thanks for watching.